I was raised as an atheist. When I was 15, I started asking questions. Why are we here? I wanted a simple life. So I read the Bible again and again and again. Some bits like a hundred times. I went to several churches and what I saw, it was not practicing what was written in their book. Like you have the Bible, the Old Testament, and then the Gospels. And then you have this whole bunch of other stuff, which seems to say a different message to all the stuff that's in there before. And it seems to put a different twist on it. And it wasn't Jesus saying these things, peace be upon him. Islam is not for just a bunch of intellectuals. It's for everybody. It's not just for the Imam, it's for the whole of humanity. Worshipping him the way he told us to worship him. I checked out Islam, I believed it was the truth, and Alhamdulillah became a Muslim. In Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, he was salatu was salamu ala rasulillah, he wa ala ali, he wa as habi, he ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatu. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of God Almighty be upon you. I'd like to invite onto the stage Brother Omar Dexter from the UK. Brother Omar Dexter comes from Derby in the United Kingdom. He reverted to Islam approximately six years ago. He graduated in physics from Nottingham University in 1998. Brother Omar worked in the automotive industry for companies such as BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover and Ford as a scientist and manager. After returning from Hajj three years ago, he became the vice chairman of his local mosque in Rugby, UK. He's involved in various charity work and also many consultative roles. He enjoys exercise, especially mountaineering and amateur gymnastics. And also having spent some time with him throughout the conference, I can attest to the fact that he also has a very cheeky sense of humor. So inshallah, I'd like to invite for his talk today, which is entitled, How I Came to Islam, my brother Omar Dexter. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you've said I've got a cheeky sense of humor. Thanks for the introduction. Jazakallah. Now the question I think you all want to ask to start with is what's the hardest thing about coming to Islam? Is it the prayers, the fasting, the hajj? If it's compulsory upon you. The truth is, is that it's eating curry for breakfast. That's the hardest thing. There's nothing else. There's no other hardship in Islam. Alhamdulillah. First of all, I'm honored to be invited here to speak. I feel a little bit out of my depth. Alhamdulillah. Islam is not for just a, a bunch of intellectuals. It's for everybody. It's not just for the Imam. It's for the whole of humanity. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, that's what Allah would want. What does God want for us? He wants the best of things for us. He wants us to be united on the truth. Worshipping Him the way He told us to worship Him. Living together in peace with each other. Inshallah. And people think so hard about marriage. They're looking for perfection. Too fat, too thin, two eyes, two ears. How much more should we consider the eternal resting place of our soul? Do we want to be in paradise for an eternity? Acha! In paradise for eternity? Inshallah! Acha! Do we want to be in hell, a place of torment? Torment for an eternity? It's quite a while. Nay! The stakes couldn't be higher. Okay then, I'll give you the short version of my story. I checked out Islam. I believed it was the truth, and Alhamdulillah, became a Muslim. What? It's not fair. It's not, I'm being heckled now from the audience. Alhamdulillah, that's more like it. That's what I wanted. MashaAllah. I was raised as an atheist. Now that means that you don't believe in any God. And to be honest, I was a very naughty boy. 
I was always fighting and coming home with letters from the school complaining about me. But my dad, he was like the Kung Fu instructor, so it was okay. He'd just say, did you win? I'd say, yeah. I said, that's okay then. No problem. Mafe muscular. It was a life of melting things, letting down tires, tying knots in things. And you'd want like a wet towel, you know, where you can like do this and make it like a whip. It was like that as well. I said it was very naughty. But I don't do that stuff anymore. Maybe except for the towel. Only above the waist. And uh, while it's on camera, I just want to say, Mickey, I'm so sorry about your swimming trunks. It was me. So, inshallah, Allah will forgive me now, I said it, inshallah. I did what I thought was right. And that was based upon my personal opinions and what society around me found acceptable. Looking back now, it doesn't seem like a very smart move. I was never a trouble starter, but always seemed to be like the trouble finisher. And it was not necessarily a proportional response. As we see today in the world, little things, big response. $5,000 bombs being dropped on $5 tents. Not a proportional response. Not that price is an issue. Anyway, what I saw around me was very bad. And I questioned society. All are telling lies, drinking alcohol, girlfriends instead of wives. So many people breaking their promises and not caring when they broke their promises. There's one thing to say inshallah with intention and another one to say it out of habit with no intention. It's a difference. When I was 15, I started asking questions. The kind of questions like, why are we here? And I think around the world a lot of people do this. I was not the only person. I wanted a simple life. And I wondered why the world was in such a mess. So I read the Bible. And I didn't want it to be true when I started. I just thought, I'll check out religion with an open mind. But I was really looking for a simple life. And I'm thinking, if I can eliminate religion, Alhamdulillah, it's one less thing to worry about. That's what I thought before I read it. But I was also seeking for guidance. A set of standards. Is it just me who did what I thought? What I thought was right based upon my opinions, which were probably based upon the society around me? It didn't seem very smart. So I read the Bible again and again and again. Some bits like a hundred times. Now I'm not like Dr. Zakir Naik. I can't tell you the chapter and the verse, but I pretty much know what's in there. So don't if it comes to any questions, I don't think we've got time today, but another day if it comes to questions, I'll just talk in general. So the detail stuff, somebody else does that, inshallah. And I got very scared. I got so scared because I realized I've been behaving in a way which was not acceptable to God. And it was not on. No more towel whipping. Letting tires down. It's my fault. I've got to pay the price. As well as the melting stuff and the knots. I did believe that the Bible contained some truth, even though upon reading it, and I was the kind of person that reads it, like I've got a calculator with me, and it's saying various numbers, and, and it's not quite matching up, and I'm, I'm, and I'm typing them in and seeing if it makes sense. But even with the contradictions and inconsistencies, like parts which don't seem to match, I still thought it was the truth. I thought, I can't ignore this book. So I reformed my character. And at the same time, my family, they had a spiritual awakening. I thought, I can't ignore this book. So I reformed my character. And at the same time, my family, they had a spiritual awakening. It's like somebody had just switched on a light. I started, uh, well, I did well at school before, but I was less naughty. 
I didn't go to school much, but I was less naughty. I never got involved in a church because I went to several churches and what I saw, they was, they was not practicing what was written in their book. They seemed to, like, you have the Bible, the Old Testament, and then the Gospels, and then you have this whole bunch of other stuff, which seems to say a different message to all the stuff that's in there before, and it seems to put a different twist on it. Like, like it's come from somewhere, I'm not quite sure where. Like someone seemed to have invented it. And it wasn't Jesus saying these things, peace be upon him. It was somebody else. They just don't seem to be following their book. So it says in the Quran, if only the Jews and the Christians would follow what's written in their book. So I started college. And I was unhappy. I dropped out. I quit. I was looking for something better. I just wasn't satisfied. Have you ever heard the expression, the grass is always greener on the other side? Is it just from the UK? Or everybody hear that one? Acha! It means you think there's something better out there than what you've got. So I wanted to travel the world and go and find it. So I thought, hang on, hang on. Even though I've dropped out of college, I'm supposed to be a smart and clever. The teacher said I was when I went to school. So I joined the Merchant Navy. I thought, I'll find a way of getting paid to travel the world. I thought, alhamdulillah. And it started with one month's pre-sea training at the Glasgow College of Nautical Studies. Now really, it was like fire training, sea survival, water stuff, that sort of thing. Basically, they put me in a burning box and then tried to drown me and then said I was ready. Now, this institution is based in a place called Scotland. Anybody heard of Scotland? Acha! Based in the very northern part of the UK. But the part of the town it was in was very dangerous. In one month, there's like three bodies found, dead bodies, not just like people falling asleep. Three dead bodies found within 100 yards of my room. The locals would come to the windows, and they've got bars at the windows on the ground floor. I'd handle it, I was on the first floor. They have machetes poking through the bars and knives. It's in Scotland, in the UK, in the dangerous part of town. It's changed now, it's different. The police used to patrol it twice a day with helicopters. It was the kind of area where people drive around it, not through it. People walk around in gangs. It's good to be a good runner and a good fighter at that time, because we don't know which you're going to need. It felt like survival training. And it was good, for what, good training for what was to come. So I left the UK from Liverpool, heading for the Caribbean. I thought I'd leave all this behind. Alhamdulillah, nice and warm. Winter coming. I thought I could manage in the Caribbean over the winter. I was on a 28,000 ton container ship. Now the Merchant Navy, it's not like the military. They haven't got guns and stuff. Maybe a flare gun. They carry cargo around the world. So it's not like press-ups. One of my colleagues is more interested in drinking. It just didn't feel right. Anyway, we crossed the Atlantic Ocean. And at the front of the ship, when you look over, there's these like fish mid-ocean, they jump out the water and fly and it was like sort of glide for a bit and then back in the water. It was very exciting, never seen anything like it. It's just a feeling of excitement and freedom. Like I'd left behind like what I saw was a load of problems, not my problems, society's problems. And I was ready for a fresh start, new place, never been there, a load of new places. And I got an open mind with a positive outlook, very optimistic. It was getting warmer every day. It was going through different time zones, setting your watch as you cross it in the Atlantic every day. I was heading for the Caribbean, South America, and Central America. It was very exciting. There's so many places I've been to, and I've forgotten most of them. So if I get some of the details wrong of specific places, forgive me. I don't want to be sued by, like, Haiti or Venezuela or something. So I start off in Central America. It was in Guatemala. 
And I thought, what are humble people? They're very friendly, but always, it's like eyes down, minding their own business. I thought, what a great place. I could like it here. I could move here. Only later I learned of all the mass murders. There's like a genocide that had happened there not long before. The people were grieving. And I went to South America, in Venezuela. Half the town was on fire. But I was told it's normal. You expect this. It's South America. I was with Tony from Tobago, my workmate. It was very, very hot. Maybe not just because half the town was on fire, it was just hot. So we got an orange drink. And in all fairness, it did look a bit like a hand grenade. It's like, you know, like a round bottle. But it wasn't, it was orange juice. Now the first warning, there was a boy running up a hill like very steep like this. Like he's running for his life. And I turned around expecting to see a tiger or something. But there wasn't. We don't have tigers in Mumbai. And the next thing, there's gunfire. Pistol shooting. I know what this sounds like. I used to shoot pistols. But that was before I was a Muslim. Don't do that anymore. Alhamdulillah. Next thing, I've got a shotgun pointed at me. And the guy's eight feet away from me, roughly. I didn't measure it, but it was too far to grab the gun and too close to run. So I just froze. I think he thought I got a hand grenade. That's why he singled me out with the, with the shotgun. It's like... <coughs> didn't feel very safe. The only thing going through my mind, I just thought it's too late to pray. It's too late. We don't know when that moment is coming. When we will be the end of our life. One time I fell overboard. And I shouted, I'm out. Stupid thing to say. I should have shouted, help. It's like I'm playing cricket or something. But you don't know how you will react when that moment happens and something happens so unexpectedly. You don't know how you will react. And that's how I reacted. I thought, too late to pray. I felt like I was not ready to die. Like I got things in life to discover and work out why I was here. Anyway, he looked at me in the eye and he paused. I'm a bit taller than the average in South America. So like, the, like, like this. Not like pygmies, but a bit shorter than me. And he paused, and he turned and he shot somebody. And then he shot somebody else, and somebody else, and somebody else, and somebody else. It's one of these guns where they like this. And later on, I phoned my family back home in the UK. I said, did you hear about the war gone off in Venezuela? All this stuff had happened. I asked about news reports. And all they said was, no, it just said student demonstrations in Venezuela. That's all it said. Five people was killed that day with shotguns. You imagine how many people are injured? I had the realization then that other news stories, they exaggerated some little things and made a big deal of it. And they minimized other things that they, they thought was not important. It felt like the media was so unreliable. Like they want to sway people's opinions about what's right and wrong. And it felt like a big lie. And I just felt sick. I'd become very discontented with the world. It was like an epidemic in more places I went to. I thought, what a miserable and sinful state of affairs. How much of the world is like this? Maybe God was drawing my attention to the worst of attributes showing to me the worst of things. And that's not to mention all the bribery and the smuggling and the pirates. There wasn't too many, but it's a little story. The drugs, torpedoes, magnetized to the bottom of the ship to take across the Atlantic for drug smuggling. So the diver would come down the other end and take it off. I started to learn what the world was really like. That's not to mention the sharks. That's another story as well. And I just despaired about the world. But you see the recipe for this awful situation. It was alcohol and adultery. That's what was going off. Allah says to us, stay away from these things. Not just don't do it. He says stay away from them. Don't come near to it. Like alcohol, don't buy it, don't sell it. 
Don't go in an alcohol environment. Don't carry it. Onto the subject of adultery. Brothers, as we know, eyes down. If you're not married, get the intention to get married. Nobody said, Inshallah. Are you all married then? Nee, Acha. Stop shaving your beards. Say, Inshallah. No, that's just for the men. Sisters, eyes down as well. Properly dressed, Inshallah. MashaAllah. Mumbai, I'm very impressed. Lots of further. Alhamdulillah. You can tell where the Muslim areas are by the ladies, not the men. I'm sorry, guys. Please, beards. Allah knows best. So back to the sisters. Help the brothers. Eyes down. Make a firm intention to get married if you're not already married. Make a firm intention to stay married if you're married. Inshallah. Now back to the Caribbean. Another place. It was Haiti. The home of voodoo. Black magic. Obviously in Islam, all magic is forbidden. It's a test from Allah and we have to stay away from it. So, eventually I'm back in the UK. I got the child frightener. But I called it a wooden statue on the customs form. I thought I'd get in trouble. Time to get out of the Merchant Navy. I thought I had enough. All the places I thought I'd go to and see something better. No, it was worse. Even worse than what I saw before. But I got to get the captain's permission to leave. Because in Islam we have to keep our promises and responsibilities. Very important. After some time had passed, I did some menial jobs. And after so many broken promises in society, I became obsessed with the glitter of the world. Fancy cars, Rolex watch, striving in my career, looking for promotions, aspiring for positions. Workaholic, not alcoholic, workaholic, wasn't that bad. Told you I was a good boy. It seemed like the more people around me that lied, the better they got on. If they kept the promises to the important people and broke the promises to the, to the, the small people, the unimportant people, the better they did. I hated this attitude. Sometimes it seems like if you told the truth, you was hated for it. I was not contented at all. I understand why so many superstars commit suicide, because they see what's above them, and they start to reach the heights, and they see there's not much left. Obviously, suicide forbidden in Islam. But I was on a business trip. I went to Dubai. I saw the best attributes of the Muslims. Basically, I was happy to become a Muslim. Very, very happy. Because look at the attributes of the Christians. This is what the Muslims are doing. So, I'd like to share the rest of the story some other time, maybe, inshallah. Jazakallah for listening. Did you enjoy it? Acha? Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.